Hi, welcome to This Is What The Bible Says, What Say You? I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina. The Bible says in Psalms 33, verse 4 and the A clause, the word of the Lord is right. And my friends, I tell you, I thank God that his word is right. The word of God is settled in heaven. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. The Bible says, wherewithal well, shall a young man cleanse his ways except by taking heed to the word of the Lord. My friends, I am a defender of the faith and I believe that if, if anything is under attack today, it is the truth of God and the truth about God, the truth of the scriptures and the truth about the scripture. And the attack comes from without as well as from within. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sin. In uh, this is what the Bible says, what say you, oftentimes we tackle uh, things that are out in public uh, events, both recent and things that have happened uh, in the past and, and things that we even believe will happen in the future. And, uh, and we attack these things with a thus saith the Lord. Or should I say we address these things with a thus saith the Lord. And, and uh, most of the time when there is an attack, we, the actual thing that we do here is we respond to the assault on God's truth. In a recent interview, the Bishop T.D. Jakes did an interview with the Huffington Post. Uh, much has been talked about this. You've heard about it, I'm sure. And uh, 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 he also uh, gave a, a, a retraction or an apology or a change of story. I really don't know what you call uh, what, he, what he did, um, uh, but uh, I want to address this, and I want to say to you that I am not speaking for the great church that I am a part of, the Church of God in Christ. The Church of God in Christ has its own PR department uh, that speaks for our great church, and they do a much better job than, than I probably, probably would ever be able to do. But I am speaking as a man of God. I am speaking as one who is qualified to speak to the issues that affect our time. And when anyone uh, says things that create a lot of confusion, we do know that God is not the author of confusion, uh, uh, but he's the author of peace. When confusion and ambiguity and uh, 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 shades of gray are applied to things that, that are as black and white and as, as night and day as can be, then I think that it is the obligation of the man of God, it is the obligation of those who speak for the God of the Bible to respond. Many times in the church world, indifference is viewed as an endorsement. So when we are quiet on issues that we should be vocal on, many times then people uh, tend to think that we agree with the, the individual who is making the noise. And a whole lot of noise is being made. Uh, speaking of that, in the interview with the Huffington Post, uh, Bishop Jakes was actually promoting his book, Destiny, Step Up Your Purpose. The uh, Morehouse College professor, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, was interviewing uh, the bishop on, on his book, Step Up Your, Your Purpose. As you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes is a, a very successful man. He has a tremendous ministry there in Dallas, Texas, the Potter's House. It's a very large church. He's a world-renowned speaker, author, movie maker. You name it, this guy is able to do it. Uh, but uh, in this particular uh, interview, an online viewer called in with a question. And the online viewer, well, they, they, they sent the, the question in, and here's what it says. Do you think that the LGBT community and the black church can coexist? Now, my friends, quickly here, I do not think that the questioner was wondering whether or not the LGBT community and the black church can coexist on planet Earth. The Apostle Paul writes in uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9, he says, I wrote unto you, uh, 
wrote unto you in an epistle not to company, that is, not to associate with fornicators, that is, with, with sexually immoral persons. The word fornicator here covers all kinds of sex except sex between a man and a woman. A man born male and a woman born female, and they are married. This also covers bestiality. This pornea covers homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, bestiality, you name it, adultery, sex uh, before marriage, and, and any other form of sexual activity other than a husband and a wife. So the Apostle Paul says that we're not to keep company with fornicators. He says, yet not altogether the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or the extortioners. You see that? The swindlers or the idolaters for then must ye needs to go out of the world. Paul says we got to leave the planet not to be around these people at all. So I don't think that the questioner was questioning whether or not the, that can be members of the LGBT community and the black church on planet Earth. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense. And I do not think that the questioner was questioning whether or not there are members of the LGBT community in the black church, because we all know that that is the case, sadly, and, and not so sadly. I think everyone should attend church, but I do not think that everyone should serve in church. I believe that everyone is welcome to come and to sit at the upper room. We welcome everyone of all stripes and colors to come and be a part of the service. But if you're going to serve in the church, if you're going to hold a position, if you're going to usher, if you're going to be a deacon, if you're going to be a choir member, a musician, you name it, so forth and so on, then one has to be born again and washed in the blood of the lamb. The Bible declares that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination before the Lord. People who hadn't been washed in the blood should not be serving in the church. And this is not narrowly applied to homosexuals or lesbians or the LGBT community. This, uh, this goes for everyone. And in churches where you see unsaved people holding positions of authority, you see havoc in the church. My heart goes out to any preacher who has an unsee unsaved unspirit filled deacon to contend with or or ushers who hadn't been washed in the blood or people in the church who hold positions of power who've never been born again these people they curse they swear they bring guns to business meetings uh, they they handle the church as though church is a club thank god for serving in a church where the board that serves with me they all washed in the blood the choir that sings behind me they're washed in the blood the musicians who play are washed in the blood. I never said that everyone is perfect, but we've been washed in the blood and we have a heart toward the Lord. And when sin creeps its ugly head, we do something about it. Thank God for saved elders and saved missionaries. Having a wife, 35 years of marriage, who is saved and love the Lord. Thank God that my kids are saved and my little grandchildren uh, are four and five years old. They love church and love the Lord, so forth and so on. We have problems like any other church, but Jesus is Lord and the God of the Bible is exalted. I believe that the question, back to this, that the question uh, that the, the questioner was asking uh, Bishop Jakes, can members of the LGBT community and the black church worship together with members of the LGBT community coming out of the closet, claiming to be LGBT, and serving Jesus Christ as LGBT without repenting from that lifestyle and serve along with born-again, spirit-filled, washed-in-the-blood people. Now, if I, if I have gotten the questioner's question wrong, then you can disregard everything else that I've said. So I am speculating. This is what I actually believe the question was. And his response to the question was, uh, uh, was, was amazing, astounding, appalling, shocking. Uh, his response was, absolutely. I think it's going to be diverse from church to church. Every church has a different opinion on the issue, and every 
gay person, as he calls it, I don't call them gay, I, I call them homosexual. Every gay person is different, and the reason I don't, I don't believe that they're gay. And I believe that in a public, uh, in, a, in a PR battle, he who controls the rhetoric wins the war. Uh, there was a meeting held in Warrington, Virginia, uh, in the 80s, of people who, who, who met collectively over 126 people. Their goal was, how do we get America to overcome its fear of homosexuals by the end of the 90s. They wrote a book, their playbook is called After the Ball, and one of the things that they did was, they said, we gotta come up with a term. We gotta, we gotta come up with a term, we gotta get away from terms like homosexual and other terms. We gotta come up with a term that the people will accept. And the term that they, that they voted on, that, that they came up with was the word gay. So uh, I don't use uh, euphemisms to describe wickedness. Now the church has often, uh, 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 gotten on preachers for using slang. You know, you shouldn't use slang. You shouldn't say words like faggot, queer, fairy. You know, that's wrong. You know, even though our Lord did use slang, the Lord says, give not, in Matthew chapter 7, give not that which is holy to dogs. He was talking about human beings. He says, cast not your pearls before swines. The Lord called them swines and talking about human beings. Uh, the truth, If the truth be told, the word faggot was an apt and is an apt metaphor. A faggot by definition is a bundle of dead sticks tied together which cannot germinate. Well, if you take a bundle of men and put them in a room and let them have sex with each other all night long, I guarantee the next day no one uh, will come out of that room pregnant. There will be no germination for you don't get babies from, from uh, that or from there. So, uh, he says that everybody is different. Every gay person, to read the quote, is different. To think each are all the same is totally not true. Uh, Bishop Jakes revealed that he is, well, Lamont, Lamont Hill pushed the bishop uh, a bit further and, uh, on, and, and asked him, has your thinking evolved? And notice what he, he, he does. He goes back to 2012. He uses the language of the first president of color, President Barack Obama, who said to the American people that he has evolved on the issue. Well, with truth be told, in 1996, he was for same-sex marriage. Eight years later, in 2004, he was against same-sex marriage. And eight years later, in 2012, he was for it again. So I don't know if you call that evolving, but, uh, 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 but he uses... President Barack Obama's language, he says, have your ish, have you, has your thinking evolved on this? And Bishop Jakes revealed, evolved and evolving. Number one, before I go any further, I think to, to, to give the answer absolutely denies the call of the scripture. The Bible declares that we are to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God calls us out. He calls us out to live a holy life and to live a separated life in godliness and holiness. Uh, when, people, when people accept Jesus Christ, people are supposed to change. And I, I don't think it's right to say to a homosexual person, uh, let me just send you to a homosexual affirming church. Churches that affirm homosexuality are churches that disown the Bible. You can't, you can't pick portions of the scripture and uh, cherry pick and say, okay, we're not going to preach what Paul says about Romans. We're not going to pick, pick, preach what Moses said uh, on the issue. We're not going to preach what Jude, what Peter said on the issue. We're not going to preach what our Lord had to say on the issue, who every time he spoke of Sodom and Gomorrah, he spoke of them in the pejorative. Yes, you can't do that. So any church that is a homosexual affirming church is a false church. The truth is whether it's homosexuality, lying, killing, stealing, adultery, you name it. The Bible says when you come to the Lord in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, wherefore come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And the God of the Bible says, and I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and you shall be my, my sons and daughters, 
saith the Lord Almighty. The Lord Almighty says, come out from among them. The Apostle Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. And such were some of you. Such were some of you. Well, let me read verse 9. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh, uh, be not deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, uh, that is feminine men, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That is a reference there to homosexuality. But he doesn't, he doesn't stop there. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And Paul says to the saints at Corinth, he says, and such were some of you. But, but now you are washed now you are sanctified. Now you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and by the spirit of our God. Uh, listen, uh, Bishop, the Lord says that we're not to send them to churches that will affirm and endorse and condone their sin. The Lord says we're to send them to churches who will cry loud and preach the truth and encourage them to come out of sin. Uh, he says that... Uh, that each church is different and, and, and have a differing opinion on the issue. Bishop Jakes, you know as a man of God, we do not allow human opinion or mere opinion to guide our faith and practice. We believe that the word of the Lord is right. We believe in such a thing that there is such a thing as overarching truth, that the truth is the unveiled reality that lies at the base of a thing. When you, when you peel the onion and you strip away all of the layers, there is such a thing as truth. And we believe that the word of truth, the word of God, Jesus Christ, is the truth that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus even claimed, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, we believe in such a thing as overarching truth. And the truth is that the Bible condemns homosexuality. The Bible condemns the entire lifestyle of the LGBT community. The Bible condemns bisexuality. The Bible condemns, oh my Lord, uh, uh, transgenderism. The Bible teaches that our bodies is the temple of the living God, and whosoever defile God's, God's temple, him will God destroy. The Lord has never given any man the right to allow a doctor to take his perfectly, his, his God-given, perfectly good functioning penis and to make it into, to cut it away and, and, and make it into, it's still not a vagina, but, uh, but uh, whatever it is that it becomes. It, it's a wicked thing. It's, it's difficult to even talk about. Uh, and, and vice versa, for a woman to try to do, this, to, to do this to her female body part to create a male organ, that is against God. And you get in trouble with God. That's one of the reasons why uh, uh, suicide is 20% higher amongst transgendered people than the overall homosexual population. You know what happens? They wake up one day and they see that they've done something terribly wrong. They see that they've done something that spoke more to them. They're being demon possessed or mentally ill than anything else. Anytime a man can look in the mirror and despite all the evidence, despite all of the evidence that he sees looking back at him, despite all that evidence and say, I'm a woman, you got to know that there's something wrong. You got to know that there's something wrong with any man or any woman who thinks that God didn't get it right, that God put their, uh, their female spirit in a male body. So uh, the Bible condemns this behavior and no preacher worth his salt would, and I don't think I'm misunderstanding you here, would send someone to a church that would affirm their sin. And uh, uh, Lamont Hill, he, he pressed on the issue. He asked you, have your thinking evolved? And you said, sir, evolved and evolving where I am is to better understand. My question would be, better understand what? 
Are we trying to better understand uh, the pedophile? Are we trying to better understand the serial killer? Are we trying to better understand uh, the thieves on Wall Street? Are we trying to better understand uh, the police officer that guns down an unarmed uh, 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 a teenager, whether he's black or white or whatever the color? Are we trying to better understand people who think that the rebel flag has to do more with heritage than r hatred? Are we trying to better understand why women would go to an abortion clinic, black women in particular, to the tune of 1,876 per day and terminate uh, their babies, kill their own babies, and these same people will, will march and, and declare that black lives matter? Well, I guess it does matter until mom decides that it doesn't. Are we trying to better understand uh, black on black crime? Are we trying to better understand uh, all of these other issues? What is it that you need to better understand? And then you, you, you do a shift altogether, which is nonsensical. You uh, says, we, the church, bought into the myth uh, that this is a Christian nation. I guess, too, this is still part of the Obama doctrine. President Obama said we are no longer just a Christian nation, but we're also a Jewish nation, a Muslim nation, a Buddhist nation, a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. But most nations uh, describe themselves religiously uh, uh, by the religion that dominates that nation. Now, America, uh, we, don't, we know that 70% of Americans aren't Christians, but, but polling show that 70% of, uh, of America's population identify as the Christian, as Christians, with the Christian religion. So in, in, in any other country, in, in a Buddhist country where 70% of the people identify as Buddhists, I guarantee you the leaders call it a Buddhist nation. In, in Muslim Islamic countries uh, where 70% uh, of the people identify themselves, they self-identify as, uh, as Muslims, uh, they, call them, they call it a nation, a, mu a Muslim nation. And, and, and you know what? We're even in a day now where Bruce Jenner self-identifies as Kate, and we call him Kate. So why is it that we, that we would say, that the president would say that we're not a Christian nation when 70% 70, 70 of people polled according to the Barna polling group identify themselves as Christians? The president has also said this, another quote, whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. No president has ever made uh, such an outrageous uh, statement. He, he also said this, we do not consider ourselves a Christian nation. I would like to know who the collective we are because I'm a part of this nation and I do consider America a Christian nation and I mourn for how this great land has backslid and turned its back on the religion that made it great. You say that we bought into the myth. My friends, attached to this uh, broadcast, attached to this, there are several messages that I have preached showing the quotes from the founding fathers, showing the quotes from people who lived uh, during the, the founding of this country, signers of the Declaration of Independence, people who have said over and over and over that this is a Christian nation. David Joshua Brewer, 1837 through 1910, he was a Supreme Court Justice. He gave the opinion on the 1892 case of the Church of the Trinity versus the United States. Quote, we are a Christian people. The morality of this country is deeply engrafted upon Christianity. He also said these and many other matters add volume of unofficial declarations to the mass of organic utterances that this is a Christian nation. There are so many quotes. They are everywhere that declare that this is a Christian nation. Personally, I believe the myth is that is, 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 is uh, those who say that it has never been uh, a Christian nation. And then to hear a preacher say in the interview, we no longer look to public policy to reflect biblical ethics. I say to this outrageous statement, oh, really? Um, uh, what about thou shall not kill? What about thou shall not commit adultery? What about thou shall not steal? Thou shall not bear false witness? 
What about the multitude of passages in the Bible that we actually do build our public policy from? What about our three legislative branches of government, judicial, legis legislative, and executive? Uh, ac according to history, it was uh, the Baron Charles Louis Joseph D. Secondet Montague uh, who actually wrote this. He says, uh, to prevent the accumulation of power, uh, he proposed separating the powers of government into three branches. This idea of dividing a monarch's power into judicial, into judicial, legislative, and executive branches re reflected Isaiah 33 and 22. That says, for the Lord our God is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. And, and, and these things we go by today. He also went on and wrote, uh, the morality of the gospels uh, is the noblest gift ever bestowed by God on man. We shall see that we owe to Christianity benefits which human nature can never sufficiently acknowledge. Well, if we're not going to look to the Bible uh, to reflect public policy, then what are we going to look to? Human nature. We're going to leave it up to the opinions of people. There has to be something. There's got to be a core. There's got to be a bedrock. There's got to be something that uh, is an arbiter, something that settles the case. Well, that thing has been in times past for our great nation, the Bible, and most certainly for every man of the cloth. And uh, uh, Hill went on uh, with the questioning. Uh, Hill kept up up the line of questioning, bringing Bishop back to the conversation in the pews, in the church, in Bible studies across the country. And so uh, they, they, they talked about this, and I think that the answer was that he gave. No preacher should have given that answer. Now, as I wrap this up, um, he gave a retraction, and it's out there. I've see, I'm sure you've seen it. But uh, the, 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 the problem I have with uh, the retraction is that it doesn't reflect uh, what actually happened. Now, uh, it begins with this. Although the, vast, although the vast majority of people seem to understand my previous posts on the subject, a few seem to question what was, in their view, a veil of ambiguity on, same -sex, on the same-sex marriage statement. Um, uh, it wasn't just our view. It was also the view of the Huffington Post. So... Uh, the Huffington Post, the headlines from the Huffington Post says, Bishop T.D. Jakes evolved and evolving on LGBT issues. Huffington Post, Bishop T.D. Jakes on the black church's shifting stance on LGBT, on the LGBT community. I wonder why there was no letter posted to the Huffington Post and said to the Post, you misunderstood me as well. The truth is, we didn't misunderstand you, nor did the Huffington Post misunderstand you. That was, uh, uh, that, that, I, I don't know, I don't think I'd use the word ambiguity. I, I think that, that, that you, you, would, you were deliberate in the things that you had to say, and it was quite, uh, it was, it was, it was quite clear that you were, you were evolving, you, you were shifting uh, your views, and uh, uh, in the letter where, where you respond, uh, I guess, uh, from your standpoint, the, 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 uh, the, the church is, we're just silly, and we don't know the definition of the word evolve, and so you give it to us. Uh, but what I, uh, what I did say is that I am evolving from the Latin, uh, meaning to unroll, open, and unfold. Uh, the inference that I am developing in my approach to the LBGT community that I may share the gospel most effectively uh, so as to lead whosoever will to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Granted, evolving is not a church word. So the church don't understand the word evolving. Well, did the Huffington Post misunderstand the word evolving? I guess evolving is not a Huffington Post word either because the church and the Huffington Post, sir, came to the same conclusion uh, on uh, your, your statements. But in your statements, there was no mentioning of winning them to Christ. There was no mentioning of sharing the gospel. What you actually said was every church is different. Every member of the LGBT community is different, that they can coexist and that they need to, uh, that churches are different. So they need to go to a church 
that you said that churches had differing opinions on this, on the issue. So you, 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 uh, you didn't mention sharing the gospel and winning them to the Lord and getting them to come out of their sins. I don't think sharing the gospel was mentioned in the interview um, at, at all. Um, it has come to my attention for some evolving is reminiscent of the term used by the president in his shifting positions on marriage. And, and you, you're right about that. Uh, uh, and, and we do, we, we, he did do that. And uh, uh, a signaling, a flip flop six months ahead of the 2012 elections. That was never the intent of my comment, nor is it representative of my convictions on this subject. Well, thank you, sir. Because one thing I will not try to do, I will not try to read your mind. I will not try to play God and pretend that I can read your heart. But I did, I did, as I forementioned, I did when I heard, when I read it, I thought about the president. I thought about what he said in the 2012 election, which, by the way, after he came out and disagreed with the God of the Bible on the subject of marriage, after he said that he thinks same-sex marriage is the direction that the church should go in, and he said that he got this from talking to his wife and his children. Black uh, support of the president went up. I know of very few preachers. I knew of some ministers, but I know of very few preachers um, uh, who actually said, you know, if the president is going to endorse a lifestyle that is, uh, that's against God, then he won't get my vote. Um, uh, so after he shifted uh, his, his uh, uh, our support, the, the black church's support of him actually increased. And here we are today, six years into his, uh, into his administration in terms of jobs, productivity, performance, in, in terms of, uh, of, of benefits and change. The African-American community is worse off in every, by every measure. Uh, that you can look at. Uh, we have not been improved upon at all. As a matter of fact, I feel like we're the forgotten people in, uh, uh, in America, and I actually think that we deserve better. Yes, we deserve better. We deserve better from the White House. We deserve better. We deserve better. Let me say this. Uh, Bishop says that uh, his, 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 his beliefs on, about marriage and sexuality, they're all, and on all other topics, are based on the scripture, 2 uh, uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and given for doctrine, and it's, it's profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction, uh, and, and for instructions in righteousness, but you can't find 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 in what you said at the Huffington Post. Would have been great, man. It would have been great, Bishop, had you uh, quoted uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, while you were at the Post doing the interview and said those things to uh, 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 Hill. That would have been fantastic. And, and man, we've been, we've been, we would be singing your praises. You also mentioned Ephesians 5 and, 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 and 31. Ephesians 5, 31 says, For this call shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Well, how do you get that out of, I believe that the black church and the LGBT community can coexist. But the LGBT people got to find churches who agree with their lifestyle, but there are different churches on, the churches have different opinions on the subject. How do you get uh, that, this out of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. The truth is, you can't. And the truth is, that that is exactly uh, what you should have said. I like that you, read, you wrote, nor am I ashamed of the gospel uh, for fear of appearing politically correct. It is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. Well, the truth is, sir, that when you are truly not ashamed of the gospel today, it's politically incorrect. Yes, it's politically today incorrect to, to love the God of the Bible, to preach the truth. What's politically correct now is for preachers uh, to do what I've seen you do and, and many others when I, I got a chance to watch you when you were on The Doctors and you were featured and all of the professionals, when they got a chance to speak, they spoke from their profession. When it was your time to speak, I just knew you were going to throw out some powerful scriptures and you didn't make one reference to the Bible at all. Why? Because you know and I know that in the Hollywood crowd, it is politically incorrect to speak the truth according to the scripture. 
and, and, and more and more preachers are beginning to avoid the scripture. But I tell you, God's raising up people who embrace the word of God and believe the Bible. You said I use Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 29, and Hebrews chapter 13, 13 and verse 4 as a scriptural basis for what I believe. Uh, I believe in, trans in, in transforming power of the word of God, in the transforming power of the word of God. It is the ultimate truth. And... Uh, uh, it, I, I'm, I'm with you. I just wish you would have mentioned that to the Huffington Post or you would write a letter. And perhaps you have. I, and I haven't. I, I'm not aware of it to the Huffington Post and say, listen, I'm sorry that I misled you guys. I, I can tell by your headlines that you misunderstood what I was saying. And and uh, let me explain to you uh, what evolve means in the Latin as well. Listen. The Supreme Court, you even mentioned this. You said with recent Supreme Court rulings, we, we've entered a, an age where the boundaries between church and state are crystal clear. Really? What do you mean by that? I think the boundaries of church and state um, are unchanged. First of all, the separation of church and state is not a part of the Constitution. Thomas Jefferson responded to the Dansbury Baptist Association, Association uh, Danbury Baptist from Danbury, Connecticut, who wrote to Thomas Jefferson 15 years after the declaration had been uh, ratified that there should be a wall of, se of separation between church and state to protect the church from the state. To protect the church from the state. They wanted to get away from the tyranny, uh, a state-sponsored religion that, that were in, in England. They wanted protections from the church so the church could preach the gospel with power and authority and be protected from the state. Today, we're behaving as though the state needs to be protected from the church. We, we pay more attention to the freedom from religion crowd than we do freedom of religion, which is a part of our very first, uh, one of the first of our uh, constitutional rights. Now, um, um, the Supreme Court settled nothing. The Supreme Court made a mess, and you know it, and I know it. The Supreme Court has drawn the lines for the new battle, the battle between the First Amendment, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the First Amendment, and the 14th Amendment, equal protection under the law. It's going to be interesting to see how these will coexist. The, freedom, the, the, uh, the Supreme Court has put in uh, uh, place, uh, and there, there, there are things that, that's underfoot right now to come at the churches to challenge our nonprofit status. Churches who do not perform same-sex marriages. Uh, I believe, mark my words on it, I pray that I'm wrong, but in, in the years or in the times to come, this government will try to uh, revoke our nonprofit status since same-sex marriage is the law of the land, uh, this new protected class uh, uh, has a right, according to the law, many who believe this, to have a wedding in a church. The Supreme Court has made a mess. I like what Justice Kennedy said about it. To paraphrase him, he said, for those who are in favor of same-sex marriage, you know, consider that you won a victory today. Consider that you won. You got what you wanted. He said, talk about it. Dance in the streets. He says, but don't, don't call it constitutional. Because the Constitution had nothing to do with it. That's, it's bad law. I challenge anyone who's watching this to go to the Constitution of the United States, go to the 14th Amendment, and see if you can find same-sex marriage in the Constitution. See if you can find it. It's not there. Neither is abortion there. And we've killed over 58 million since 1973 from the Roe v. Wade decision. And that decision was based on a woman's privacy. Oh, my. When unelected officials in black robes began to, to uh, interpret uh, the Constitution to make it say what they want it to say, to call it a living, breathing document, you get this bad law. And the federal government trampled on states' rights. Uh, the Tenth Amendment trampled on the states' rights. It should have been uh, left to the states and let each state decide. And in this great state of North Carolina, we had made a decision. We won at the ballot box and only for it to be overturned. God is not calling for the preacher to take the position that since the Supreme Court has ruled on this matter, the matter is settled. No, 
The Bible, Bishop Jakes, and all who will hear this, has not changed. The God of the Bible declares homosexuality, sin. The God of the Bible declares lesbianism, sin. The God of the Bible declares the behavior of the LGBT community, sin. The, Bible, the God of the Bible even declares the feelings of the LGBT community, sin. For the Bible speaks of vile affections in Romans chapter 1. It's not settled. If, if any preacher accepts that and walk in lockstep with the, the fact that uh, the, boundary, the boundaries are crystal clear, then it seems, Bishop, that we didn't misunderstand you after all. Perhaps that is, you actually meant what you said. But for those of us who have a conviction, we will continue to fight for the truth of God. We will continue to stand on the word of God. For those of us who believe the scripture, nothing has changed. We believe that same-sex marriage, the greatest oxymoron that I can think of, is as wrong today as it was before the Supreme Court's ruling. They can make it legal, but they can't make it right. And it will, our country will rule the day uh, that uh, the Supreme Court rendered this decision. See the changes that will take place in the public school systems. See the things that will be taught to our little elementary school children now, uh, elementary age children now. Look, just pay attention to, to the commercials and the movies and, and all of the things, how policies will change. And those of us who believe the Bible, Christians, I pray that you would seek the Lord as never before because we're, 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 we are becoming a, a shrinking minority in this country. But let me tell you something. We're right. And the Lord is on our side. And the Lord is soon to come. My friends, I'm wrapping this up. I hope that I haven't talked too long. I hope that I have made my position crystal clear. Uh, Bishop Jakes and to anyone else, the Bible is right. And what I have told you is what the Bible says. What say you?